In this short video, I'll be showing you how Pool and Care helps industry solve some of its sound and vibration challenges. In our modern society, man-made noise is everywhere. We encounter noise in our homes, our gardens, when we travel, even in the countryside. Noise can detract from our quality of life. It can be harmful to our well-being and even to our health. Noise has become a critical marketing factor for many products. Too much noise can affect consumer perception and acceptance of a particular brand. Product manufacturers must comply with increasingly more stringent noise legislation and labelling requirements. At the design stage of the development cycle of a product, acceptable noise targets are set in terms of sound pressure levels or sound power levels. Failure to comply with stipulated targets may mean that the product may not be sold. Re-engineering of a product to meet noise specifications is costly and time-consuming. At best it means lost production. At worst it could mean withdrawal of the product from the market. When developing a product or machine, a typical noise guideline would be the sound pressure level measured in dBA at the operator's position. This can be measured using a sound level meter. Such measurements are made in factories to avoid hearing damage and also in housing to ensure noise regulations are fulfilled. The sound pressure level produced by a machine is however dependent on the acoustical environment. The amount of noise produced by a machine is therefore determined by measuring its sound power according to international standards. Such measurements can be performed by using sound pressure or sound intensity techniques. For many consumer products, the resulting sound power level must be displayed as a label on the product itself. If the sound power levels indicate that the acoustical design requirements are not fulfilled, then the noise sources have to be located and quietened either by modifying the source itself or by severing the path between the noise source and the receiver. The troubleshooting process is known as noise source identification. It provides a mapping of acoustical quantities such as sound pressure, sound intensity or loudness superimposed on a picture of the machine. The instrumentation required to produce a sound map can range from a sound level meter equipped with a sound intensity probe to an acoustical array of dozens of microphones. The type of array depends on the amount of detail required from the measurement. Inside a vehicle, for example, a spherical array and a beam-forming algorithm could be sufficient for a rough source identification. For greater resolution, a planar handheld array could be used to produce an acoustical map conformal to the surface of the structure. Did you know that over a third of the energy in Europe is consumed by household appliances? As part of the effort to reduce energy consumption, the European Union has proposed to update the energy label which has been used since 1998. From the 1st of December 2011, a new European Union directive comes into force which makes it mandatory to label washing machines with the sound power emitted during the washing and the spinning cycle. The measurements are based on ISO 3744, determination of sound power levels of noise sources using sound pressure, engineering method in an essentially free field over a reflecting plane. The specific test codes are described in IEC Household and General Requirements Standard and the Particular Requirements Standard for washing machines and spin extractors. Energy labels are mandatory on all appliances placed on the European Union market and must always be clearly displayed on each appliance at the point of sale. Pool and Care can offer a wide range of solutions for sound power determination and noise source identification based either on a handheld sound level meter or Pulse Lanex I hardware. These solutions can help industry to fulfill labelling requirements and to deliver products with acceptable noise emissions. In the 
following sequence, we will look at an example of noise mapping measurement on a washing machine. If, due to excessive noise, a redesign of a washing machine is necessary, a good starting point would be a sound map. This could be done with the aid of an intensity probe and a robot, as shown here. The same setup can also be used to measure sound power according to the ISO standards. A sound intensity probe, mounted on the end of a robot arm, can be moved from position to position on all five sides of the washing machine. From a grid of measurements made, a contour map of the sound can be produced. From the results shown here, one can see the individual spectra at particular points for the various phases of the washing cycle. One can also divide the measured surface into regions to determine the sound power of the individual areas relative to the overall sound power. This helps the manufacturer to decide where to concentrate the noise reduction efforts. Some sources are just too big to move into well-specified acoustical chambers. In these cases, the sound intensity technique is indispensable. Sound intensity measurements can be made in almost any acoustical environment, even in the presence of background noise, and still enable a reliable value of sound power to be determined. The robot shown here is 4 by 6 meters and is used for making scanned array measurements on large electrical transformers to check the quality of the production by means of a noise map. Sometimes the noise sources have to be measured in situ. In this example, the sound power of a number of extractor fans had to be measured and ranked. Here, the sound intensity was measured over a virtual surface and closing the fan using a handheld measurement and analysis system. The sound power could then be calculated by multiplying the sound intensity by the area of the surface. Have you ever tried to relax in the garden on a Sunday afternoon and your neighbour has decided to mow his lawn at the same time? Noise labelling of lawn mowers is one way of containing this source of annoyance by specifying the maximum permissible sound power. Here we see the sound power being determined using an array of 10 microphone positions according to ISO standard 3744. Some noise sources are so big that they require their own special standards. For wind turbines, noise measurements of sound power and tonality are performed according to IEC 61400-11, Acoustic Noise Measurements on Wind Turbines. According to this standard, only one microphone is required to determine the sound power. Optional microphones can be used if directionality is required. Operational and background noise measurements are required at a range of wind speeds from 5 to 10 meters per second, together with weather data and operational parameters from the turbine itself. Depending on the wind, a complete measurement could take from one day to several weeks. The Brulenkehr dedicated solution does all the bookkeeping of the data, the calculations and the generation of the report, which means the user saves both time and effort. While the measurement is in progress, data is collected and put into the appropriate wind bin, together with all the relevant operational parameters, before producing the final report. For research and development purposes, or troubleshooting on a wind turbine, noise mapping using acoustical arrays is a useful technique. Small foldable arrays can be used to give an overview of the acoustical conditions, whereas large ground-based arrays are required to obtain sufficient resolution to distinguish between leading and trailing edges of individual wind turbine blades. Here we see a portable pentangular array system at about 100 meters from a wind turbine. The results of a beamforming measurement show that most of the noise is generated from the blade tips during the downward sweep. Very little noise is generated from the nacelle on this particular turbine. Some aircraft manufacturers use a sound level meter based intensity system to map the areas of interest on the interior of the fuselage. In aircraft and business jets, Noise source identification techniques are used to locate acoustical leaks and areas where sound insulation is not up to standard. 
Here we see a spherical beam forming array used inside a large passenger aircraft. The photos from the 12 cameras inside the spherical beam former are stitched together and can be folded out rather like a globe is folded out to produce a flat representation of the world. On this picture the acoustic contours can then be mapped. Handheld microphone arrays can be used close to the surfaces inside the cabin to determine absorption, entering intensity and transmission loss. An important requirement for measurements in aircraft is that the system must be easy to install and easy to use. The single cable solution shown here enables up to 132 signals to be connected to the front end in three seconds. Just in case you missed it, let's see that again. Noise from trains, and noise produced by high-speed trains in particular, is a growing concern for urban populations. To help quantify this problem, Brühl and Kier have developed a series of foldable arrays specifically designed for outdoor measurements. Here we see a 3.2 meter diameter pentangular array with 30 microphones placed at the rail side to measure on passing intercity trains. The aim was to study the wheel rail noise as a function of the damping material inserted at the rails and the sleepers. Ultimately, the goal is to attenuate the high frequency singing of the rails, which is particularly noticeable before and after the passage of the train. Listen carefully. Other sources of interest which can be detected and mapped using moving source beamforming are the wheels on the bogey sets, the gaps between the carriages and the pantograph. Noise source identification using the beamforming technique is often used to provide a quick overview of the noise sources on a vehicle. The go-kart shown here was placed on a vibration exciter and shaken as part of a buzz squeak and rattle test. The main sources could easily be identified from the noise map and ranked in order of importance. Here we see an 18-channel beamforming array being used on the go-kart in a test cell. And here a handheld array is used together with acoustical holography calculations to provide more detailed results at lower frequencies. Whether you produce lawnmowers, trains or wind turbines, Brühl and Kier can provide the necessary tools for you to quantify the noise by means of sound power and to identify the noise sources by means of mapping techniques. Dedicated solutions using sound level meters or pulse LANX I based systems enable you to measure your acoustical targets easily and efficiently.